I'm Anne Thorpe, welcome to Kai Order. We're cunny cunning on the show today, a little bit of salsa, tango, you name it, we've got it. I'm cooking up a storm, I have the most fantastic guests, come with me. Kai Moana and fresh produce dominate my pātaka today. Ocean Seafood in Auckland have supplied me with these gorgeous crayfish. I've got some Morton Bay bugs here, which are known as slipper lobster also. And you know what? The snapper is that fresh, it's being fished in the Hauraki Gulf as we speak. Well, I'm kicking off with a very delicate dish today. And it's made with these Morton Bay bugs, or the slipper lobster as it's known elsewhere. First of all, I'm going to put some oil in my pan and get it on the stove to heat up. I'm just using extra virgin olive oil. Now these bugs are snap frozen. They've come from Australia. They're very, very fleshy inside. And I thought that Miriama and Johnny will just love this as a kickoff today because you know what? They're going to be kicking up their heels on this show. Into this other pan here, I'm going to pour some hot water. because with these I'm going to have some snap peas and some gorgeous beans to go with it and just have a little delicate appetizer to kick off with. Into my fry pan. They're so huge, so I'll only need one each. Pop them in there, just gonna let them braise away and you'll see they're gonna change color for us. And when that happens, they're practically ready. I've got some mange toot here or some sugar snaps, just tidy them up while we're waiting for those bugs to cook. And with these beautiful beans, there's no string to them, so all we need to do is just cut them up a little bit. Nice bite-sized pieces. Now my beans have come from the market. They were picked yesterday. Hey, look what's happening. I'll show you. Look, we're changing color. They're nearly cooked. Get these out of here smartly. Put them into the water. Chill them right down instantly. The colour's going to stay there. The crunch is going to be there. Voila! Look at that. Cooked perfectly. Pull them out of here. It's not overcooked. It is slightly under. That's how you should be cooking your kaimwana. I need to get my scissors and cut away the underbelly here. And look, it's a bit hot to handle. I cut these up like this. I'm gonna plate this little appetizer up. So you've got the best of the bean family, you've got the best of the pea family. I'm going to dress this, of course, with extra virgin olive oil a little bit of lime, and I'm going to garnish with the beet leaves that I've got here from our baby beets that we're going to be using later. Sprinkle with a little bit of New Zealand sea salt and some freshly ground white pepper. And there we have it, a lovely little appetizer from Miriama, Johnny and myself. Tahi rua, cha cha cha, toru fa, cha cha cha. I'm cooking kani kani koda today. And why? Because my guests Johnny and Miriama are dance stars. Yeah, and I'm getting my little wriggle in before they get here. Here we go, over here. They were alive just before, but we've knocked them off so I can put them in my steamer. I love using the lemongrass in my cooking. I love the fragrance it has. It's very subtle. So I'm just cutting it and bruising it to get out the maximum flavour from it. And then I'm going to fire it into my steamer here. Chuck it all in. And my kaffir lime leaves too. 
the coder is going to have a lovely perfume to it, but just very, very subtle. Put this bigger one in first. That should take about 10 to 12 minutes to cook. Into my pot over here, I've got salted boiling water. Now, I've put a lot of salt in there because it's for the linguine. And out of this packet, I am just taking enough for three people. This is going to take about 10 to 12 minutes too. So we've got the coda happening and we've got the linguine happening at the same time. Now into this pan here, I'm going to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I've got a whole onion and I've got about five cloves of garlic. Why five cloves of garlic? Because I love the flavour. And I think linguine needs a little bit of flavouring up, don't you? Now I don't want to brown these up, I only want them translucent. Just soft enough to bring out the flavours of that garlic and the red onion here. And what I'm going to do is add my ginger. I didn't want to cook my ginger, I just want to heat it with the warmth of the pan and the onions and garlic, and likewise for the chilli. Those are my lovely flavourings for my linguine. You don't want to overcook the linguine. Try that back. Let's have a look. Well, it's not very far away. What's the time? Yep. I'd say one more minute and it's ready. The crayfish must be ready too. Let's have a look. Look. Look how beautiful they are. Get this linguine off. I'm going to put my linguine in there. It's a little bit of shardy to cool that down. Stop the cooking process. And add all my bits and pieces here. I've got some curly parsley here that I'm going to mix in as well. And you know what? When you get a little bit of crayfish on that linguine, it's explosive, believe me. Got some lime juice here that I'll just squeeze over while I'm waiting for that to cool down a little so I can manhandle it and then get these little beauties happening. I'm going to use my cleaver here and cut through that magnificent shell like that. I'm going to open it up, check this out. It is absolutely beautiful. And look at that paru. Us Māori love that paru. Pull that away from there. Look at that. And well, look at this. This is obviously the female because that red that you see there is the formation of the eggs. Sorry. Take this out now. Pull the beautiful flesh away from the shell. My crayfish linguine or my cunny cunny cray is going to be superb. And then cut it up and add it to my linguine. I'm going to put in a little bit of the paru into my linguine. Don't need much. And then I'm just going to throw this on, toss that through. I've got some whole parsley here to go over the top with. And of course, delicious New Zealand extra virgin olive oil generously over the top. And there we have it. The spunkiest coda linguine you'll come across. But don't be put off by the fish heads. Right. She eats the eyeballs and stuff, but it's all good. <laughs> it's pretty much she's a cook cook. Kia ora in a view. Te wahini puro tu nei a Miriam Smith. Me tōna hua kani kani a Johnny Williams. Aku manuhiri mo te nei rā. Everything's so vibrant. Just like you, babe. Hey, what can I say? <laughs> Thank you. It's beautiful.
Hey, let's have a toast, though. All right. I'm just so happy you both here today. Mm, happy Thank to you. be here. Thank you for having us. Cheers. 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 Johnny. Everybody's proud of you in Birkdale Bay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm actually going back there to teach the kids. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, they love you, babe. Mm. I love my Kai. I know. <laughs> hey, we had Kinner the other day. I know. For the first time for you, eh, babe? First time. Mm. I tried it before and it never really grabbed me. I think it was all the slimy stuff on top, but the row is beautiful. It's very sweet. The ones that you had were beautiful. <laughs> Gotta say, with a bit of chilli in there, it's top, eh? Babe, it's straight out of the sea. That's mm. what the story is. Oh, Those punnets aren't quite the same when you no, put them in the punnets. No, it's not the same out of the plastic somehow, funnily enough. Good. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, nice. Well, I'll yeah, whip these beautiful, away. Beautiful, beautiful. And um, bring on the next dish. Okay. Oh. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds perfect. Yum. What's this? This is Kani Kani Koda. Love it. Yum. Yummy. Yeah. You know, I know you've just come back from South America. Mmm. In Cuba. Yep. That must have been fascinating. Oh yeah, it was awesome. I loved it. I love Brazil, it's one of my favourite countries. Did it help you with some of those moves you do on the dance floor? Um, you know, it's very different. Like the only the only dance that we did on Dancing with the Stars was the Samba that is closely linked to Brazil, but actually very rarely do you see samba ever danced in a natural environment. It's such a show dance. It's what they do on the, the big floats and the carnivale. Oh. And, but I went over there and um, the closest thing that they do do pretty much every day was more Cuba. Cuba is it's just rhythmic everywhere you go and it's salsa. And we don't oh, do that, salsa in oh, the yeah. Dancing with the Stars. Okay, I'm skipping off to the kitchen. Thank you, Thank this you. is beautiful. Well, here I am again trying to dance. I'm leaving it for the experts over there though. I'll just keep with the cooking. And check this fish out. Look how beautiful it is. It's not even gutted and it's certainly not scaled. I didn't want it scaled because I'm going to show you another way to cook snapper whole in the oven. So let's get on with gutting this thing. Just made the initial cut here into it and I'm just going to haul its guts out like this. Now you can't see me, can you? Which is just as well. No, I'm just going to whack all this gut work, chuck it in there, get the lot. Those oceans people are fantastic. They look after me. Make sure you get all the guts out. Now I'm going to haul the gills out, rip into it. Just died this beautiful creature here. That's the gills. No, don't forget the other side. So, pull it all out. Give it a quick rinse under cold running water. Clean it up. And all I'm going to do to this beautiful specimen here, I'm giving a little stroke. Before I pop it on my tray, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on the bottom so it doesn't stick at all. That's the only reason, because we're not going to have the skin today. I'm going to cook the flesh under the skin. It's got the scales on anyway, so we won't be wanting to eat that. And this fish is going to braise under its skin and scales, and I'm going to rip this up when it's cooked and get the flesh out and make up a beautiful dish for the three of us. A few carrots in here. Just sort of give them a quick flick with the peeler. They're so fresh, they're so beautiful and they're only babies. I've got some beautiful Māori potatoes here. Look at these. When I cut them open, you'll see how beautiful they are. I'm gonna pick four beautiful beets. Let's cut them off. And let's throw that into the oven. Now my fish and all the vegetables have been on for half an hour. Look at the scales, how they've gone here. We won't be eating those though. I'm gonna rip that back in a minute. First of all, on the element here, I've got some hot extra virgin olive oil and I'm going to put this 
sage in here to crisp up because once I get the flesh out of there, that's what I'm going to put on top. So we've got that lovely soft flesh of the snapper, crispy, crispy sage on the top. These don't take long to crisp up. You don't want to overcook them and therefore burn them. I think these are crisp enough. Pull them out and put them over here. Get them ready for me to crunch up or scrunch up over the flesh of the fish. Now while I'm waiting for that to cool down to handle, I'm just going to quickly deal to this broccoli. Just cut a few florets off it, like this, just enough. We can put these on to blanch for a couple of minutes only. That ice water is for the florets of the broccoli. And let's see what we've got here to deal with. I'm going to start from this end here and peel this back. Look at it. Look at this. See what's happening under there. Look how juicy and succulent this is. It's braised under the skin. It is just beautiful. I better not forget about the greens over here. We want to eat everything at its best. Now we know that broccoli is so good for us because it's been scientifically proven that it holds chemicals that starve off tumours that try and eat us up and shorten our lives. So broccoli is such a powerful vegetable. It's a superfood. Get into it. So over there for the superfood. And let's get back to plating up this wonderful fish. First of all, let's have a look at these baby beets. Now, beautifully cooked. I've got the skin on here, it doesn't matter. The goodness is always under the skin. I've got the Urinika Māori potato here. Look at the colour of that. It is a stunning potato. I've got the broccoli florets here and I've got these beautiful baby carrots. And then let's peel back this fish off here. Look how succulent this fish is. It is a beautiful way to cook snapper, to cook any big fish like this. I'm going to crumble this sage over the fish like this. And I've got my no-nonsense dressing again. It's my New Zealand extra virgin olive oil. One of the best olive oils in the whole wide world. Just a sprinkle over the top. If that's all you need, you don't need these sauces, they're not good for us. And there we have it. You can see how healthy this dish is. It's perfect for Miriamma and Johnny. Excuse me. Delicious. What have we got here? We've got tango tamari or tamari <laughs> tango. Love it. Thank you. Is that mint on top? And don't be put off, darling, you wouldn't, you won't, I know. <laughs> I've got the old head for myself. Ah, he looks happy as. I go on and on about that head. <laughs> How well, I'm going for my eye first. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> don't look. I'm not. Don't look. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Mmm, lovely. I love that olive oil. Best Very in the country. Best in the Where country, babe. It's from the Christchurch. Mm, lovely. Yeah. Nice citrus notes yeah. in it, eh? Olivines. I reckon it's the best in the world. This is beautiful. Would you Love like them. some of my mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. A little bit. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm trying to convert you back from the dark mm -mm, side. Mm -mm. That's Every like... Māori that loves fish eats <laughs> knows what I just experienced there. <laughs> it's like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 
Sometimes you just have to say no. That, that was, was exquisite. Oof. I did eat kinder with you though, Anne. You so. did. You All did. right, eh? Yeah, you're fantastic. Mm. In fact, you're probably one of the most beautiful Māori I know. Oh, Here choice. I'll you drink are. to that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. Come on. <laughs> you're gorgeous. Boys. <laughs> you are, Annie. You are, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> to being gorgeous and being Māori. <laughs> <laughs> Only on Kai order. <laughs> Only on Kai order. <laughs> I love that gluten and stuff. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Mm. It's like fear factor now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fair to say if there's any snapper out there watching this show, <laughs> they are scared, man. <laughs> They're like bringing up their cousins going, yo, uh, <laughs> watch out for that any thought, man. <laughs> oh, look at that. Well, mm. next time we have lunch, I'll try an eyeball just for you. Okay. You'll never go back, babe. That's what I'm afraid of. Shame, look at that. <laughs> oh, imagine me on a date ordering a fish head. <laughs> I'm really afraid of that. There's no hope for me. I'll have them running. <laughs> that was all right. <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some of mine? Um, yeah, why not? Go on then. Just a little sweat. I'll pay for you to starve, man. There you go. I'll get off back to the kitchen. Okay. You two have a little twirly whirly for me over there, please. All I can right. watch you while I'm cooking. Okay. And um, I'll be back in a moment. Okay. All right. We're doing we'll salsa, do. Annie. <laughs> We're going street, girl. Still so we'll do one basic. One, two. Basic. I feel all invigorated after all that tucker we've just popped away. I can't get over how Midiama can stay so gorgeous. It's because she eats so well. And this is why I'm doing a pair de deux today. It's in keeping with our theme of the dance carry on. So slice these pears up. I'm going to use a couple of sorts of pears today. These are the old packum that your backyards have usually got. Just cut these up into pieces like this. I've put my pan on the stove over there. I'm going to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on the bottom. It's heated up a little bit because we're going to have a little sizzle. And Miriamma and Johnny are going to be sizzling away over there after this pear dish. See, it's only coated the bottom, the base of the pan. Chuck those in there. You don't really taste that olive oil at all. I'll wait till they cook a little bit, and then I'm going to add some of this beautiful New Zealand active Monica honey. Now I'm going to add it right at the last minute because if you put it in the fridge, it deactivates it, so it's no good for us. And heating also will do something with it as well. So I'm going to add it at the last minute. Going to add these slivers of almonds here. Woo! Woo! A little bit of the Grand Marnier here. And then I'm going to just pop in a little bit of this honey over the top to warm through. And that's all there is to it. These pears are very sweet. And I've got a little bit of Acidophilus yoghurt here. There we go. It's as simple as that. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yum. So what dance are you going to do for me today? We've made you up a routine for, for the next dance and when it starts. Have you? Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. In fact, that was Candy Lane calling just yep. to say, how's that? Is just she to warming to it? Just to confirm. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Really? Just, just checking. <laughs> That'll never happen for me, darling. <laughs> I'll be the first one bunted off, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Because no, I'll be How the hell could you get bunted off, for God's Zach sake? <laughs> oh, not if you were Johnny. You'd be sweet. No? I've oh, got a good right. strike record. Oh, no, well, it doesn't work for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Annie. <laughs> Just close that box. Beautiful, gorgeous Miriamma Smith and the lovely Johnny Williams. I should be so lucky. See you next week, Heiko Neda. Oh, oh, oh.